go. Hey, Judy. Hi. Hello, Laura. This is Judy Dang. I'm with Laura Elfstrand. So I'm a productivity coach and I help people work more productively. And now we're at home. Uh, this is something we've never done before. We're with our kids 24 seven. People have never experienced this before. Lots of overwhelm, extraordinary emotions, stress, anxiety, fear, sadness. So although I help parents with their work side, I don't have knowledge around the family side of things. So that's why I wanted to tap into your expertise since you are the expert on building happy families. Thank you. I thought we could have this quick chat to offer parents some concrete tips for managing family stress during this time. First question for you, what are you seeing? What are the top family challenges that you're seeing people face? Yeah, so some of the things that I'm hearing from families are struggles around getting kids to listen, um, back talk and not wanting to comply with routines. We're all out of our normal, usually we have a normal routine and we go to school and, and that gives that life a certain amount of structure. And now that we don't have that structure, kids are kind of thrown off and, and it's leading, and it's a stressful time, which can also cause kids to misbehave, back talk, bad attitudes, fighting with siblings, lack of focus. Wow. Wow. That's Some a lot to handle. That I'm hearing. Yeah. And because parents are with their kids 24 seven, it's increased, right? Oh, for sure. All of those things. Yeah. Right. Wow. Wow. Back talk, lack of focusing, kids thrown out of their routines, sadness as well, right? And Oh, Maybe. for sure. Sadness when we can't see our friends. Sadness Mis that we, there's so many things we want to be able to do to go out on the playground. Missing graduation. Experience. Totally. Yeah. Birthday parties for sure. Mm. Yeah. So what do you recommend for families to address all of these, these issues? I mean, I have lots of strategies, a couple of things to think about. One is the concept of the emotional bank account. And so that is the idea that when we, that each of us in our relationships, we have a virtual, so to speak, emotional bank account. And when we pay attention to each other, when we smile at each other, when we express gratitude or we acknowledge something good that the other person did, we're putting deposits into that bank account. And in healthy relationships, when we're fighting, we have five times more positive than negative, even during a fight. And when we're not fighting, a healthy relationship has at least 20 times more positive than negative. Whoa. And so the impact of that is that then it, it colors the way that we see the other person's behavior. And it doesn't matter whether this is a child or a spouse, a partner, of somebody in our in our work even but when those when we feel appreciated and cared for and when that emotional bank account is really full then it can handle the negative things that are going to happen because we're human beings and so the example i always give is that if our partner gives us for our birthday let's say our partner gives us a picture of themselves and if our emotional bank account is really full then we're likely to say, oh, thank you so much. I love to see your face. It, it just cheers and brightens my day. I can't wait to see it at my desk or on my wall or wherever I decide I'm gonna put it. And if our emotional bank account has been feeling really empty lately, and then my partner gives a picture of himself, then I might say, you are so egocentric. I can't believe you gave me a picture of yourself. <laughs> Right, and it's the same way with our kids. A small comment, an, a negative remark, or even just something that can be neutral. And oh, if the relationship, if that emotional bank account has been full lately in both directions, then we can say, oh, maybe you're frustrated today, or it's not what you want to do right now, is it? And we can handle that better. But if the 
the emotional bank account has been getting pretty empty lately, then we're more likely to lose it. Yes. Which brings me to the second thing to really think about, which uh -huh. is the idea of if your hand, this is an illustration by Dan Siegel. And so if, if your brain, if your hand represents your brain and your wrist represents the lower parts of your brain that's for simpler things like heart rate and breathing, some people call it your reptilian brain because it responds quickly. And your thumb here in the middle represents your emotion centers, your limbic system. And your fingers at the top here represent the cortex, which is the part of our brains that solve problems. So mm. during a normal day when we feel nice and calm and everything, and we're not tired and we're not hungry, our brain's working well, then our cortex is online and our brain is all working together and the problems, everything gets all the way through. We can think clearly. But when our brain doesn't know the difference between a car that almost hit us or our child just said something, that ugh, really got on our nerves <laughs> or, or our partner said something that just made us feel attacked like we're not a good enough parent and so we flip our lids right and we go into fight or flight mode and we are responding from the lower parts of our brain from our emotions and from that quick response because our body says there's a car gonna hit us respond quickly right and so we Thank when you. we do that we're likely to respond in ways that come across as disrespect. Uh -huh. And so what we need to do in those moments is recognize that, oh, I need to calm down. Uh -huh. And by calming down, relaxing my body, going on a walk and thinking about something else, that helps to bring the cortex back online so that I can think more clearly and solve the problem using my whole brain. Right. Instead of just with my lid flipped, where I'm just like responding quick out of protect myself. Yeah, it's usually negative, right? Because and you often it's say that uh, we we regress and our language is diminished. Yes, our language and our development, whether we are two or ten or twenty or eighty. When our lid is flipped, our development is regresses. And of course, something like alcohol just makes that even more where we act even younger and younger <laughs> and those words just can't come out. Uh -huh. And so by having regular ways that we can express, hey, I need to take a break and calm down and having a ritual or a routine that says, oh, I have ways that I can calm my body, recognizing that a good break, it usually takes at least 20 minutes for our brains to clear out those stress hormones. 20 to minutes. Bring the cortex back online. If we've really truly lost it, it's at least 20 minutes. And the way that they tested it, I find so interesting because what they did is that the at the Gottman Institute in Seattle, and I don't know if it was through the institute itself or one of the universities there, but they, um, they brought people into their love lab and said, talk about something that's a disagreement between the two of you. And with some of the couples, they just let them talk about it. And with other couples, they said, oh, we're so sorry, our equipment is broken. Could you please read these magazines while we fix our equipment? <laughs> and so what they were doing was allowing, giving them something else to think about so that they weren't just saying, oh, this isn't fair, I can't believe they, I can't believe you treat me this way or she would treat me this way. It's so not fair. But by reading those magazines, they were helping to bring that cortex back online. And what they found is that the couples who, who where the equipment broke, yeah, read they the had magazine. a much more productive discussion than the couples that just fought it out. Wow. And that's something we can use, like I say, with both our partner and with our kids. Mm -hmm. And, and that sounds like a timeout. It sounds like a timeout and in, and it depends how you define what a timeout is. And which is why I personally don't like to use timeout necessarily as a punishment in itself, but thinking about maybe we even want to call it something different. It's a calm down or a, um, 
you know, maybe we want to say, oh, yeah, it's a timeout because it's but really reframing that the purpose of a timeout is to calm down because then we can talk about what do we need? How did I feel? And then because we still want to, with kids in particular, we still need some consequences for misbehavior, mm -hmm. but we want to do those wrapped in empathy and with kindness, sadness mm. instead of anger. Mm. And what do you recommend powerful. for teenagers? Back talking and discipline issues. See, and at the, on one hand, I'm like, I'm a baby specialist more than a teenager specialist. And at the same time, the idea of we apply consequences with empathy, we express empathy before we before anything we express oh it looks like this is how it might be how you're feeling this is how i'm feeling in the moment um what can we do about this together and, and being consistent i feel like that doesn't um, that doesn't change based on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so a parent age. needs to regulate themselves first before they can give empathy and help their child so totally put our message oxygen mask on first kind of thing right yeah totally putting our oxygen mask on first is a because great if, illustration because my, if my lid is flipped and my and the teen's lid is flipped it's just it's just we're winding each other up we're winding each other up okay got it wow okay ah, if families need help in this area how do you usually work with them to help them with these these issues so i just have a ton of strategies around breaking tasks down into small pieces that are manageable and working together to figure out what i call the goldilocks challenge or for example in playing alone like how long is the child able to play alone now so is, is, it, is our expectation in line with what the child is regularly able to do and how can we make, take some gradual steps to increase that. So I look at their just right challenge or their Goldilocks challenge. I look at what motivates the child and what motivates the parent. And I just have a ton of strategies that we can use to help them to hear each other better and to establish good routines that fill the emotional bank account and help mm. them to manage those negative emotions and to have rituals where they regularly have ways that they connect and let each other know that hey you're important to me mm -hmm. and do you do that um in what format like do you have classes or we're, we're all yeah on so <laughs> things are things are rapidly changing in that regard at the moment i'm mostly doing um online coaching and so we meet on a regular basis and talk through strategies and what's been working during the week and what what the challenges are and and so I'm, at the moment, I'm mostly focusing on, on coaching one-on-one -on -one with families. In the future, there may be some other programs coming up. We'll just have to see. Everything at the moment is online due to the virus, of course. At so, some point, I hope we'll go back to in-person for some of it. So in a family, do you work with the parents together and then the kids and then the everybody together? How does that work? Yeah, so ideally, I work with both parents if that's at all possible. Uh, um, I can work with one and then I think it's really important depending on the age of the child, but if it's at all applicable, I think it's really important to get buy-in and to really um, be aware of what, mo like I say, looking at the motivators. Um, and so just depending on what the topic is, then it's really, I mostly work with the parents, but really encouraging the parents and pulling in the child as much as is applicable and makes sense in that situation. Because I okay. think the more that the child can can participate in the decision making, uh -huh. okay, the more buy-in you're going to get. You can help with a family all together in, in, in one session. Yes, depending on the yeah. intent. Yeah, as much as possible, the more people that can participate, the more likely that the that everybody's gonna buy into the solution. Got it. Good. 
Cool. Thank you so much. That's super helpful because uh, we don't know how long this is going to last. And I think nerves are fraying more and more every day. So these are super helpful tips. Thank you. The bank account, taking breaks, mm -hmm. taking breaks, bank account, empathy. Yes. Mm, okay. So how do people get in touch with you if they want more information? Thank you. So my website is little-elf.org. My name is Laura Elfstrand. So my company is Little Elf Family Services. And they can also schedule an appointment for a free family breakthrough session to talk about what the challenges are and what are the options for moving forward by texting the word appointment to 555-888. 555888. Five, eight. Texting the word yes. appointment. Okay. Appointment, singular. Appointment. <laughs> okay. No Great. S's. Appointment. Got it. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. I'm really happy to have you to, uh, to help in this area because, like I said, I help people with the work side, but then now with the family side, I'm at a complete loss. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Judy.